I know I want to ask Sally Penny if she would like to have a couple of words. She's from uh, the National uh, Association of Probation Officers in Sheffield, uh, and she just wants to say something about the uh, privatisation that's going on there. Hiya. Uh, yeah, as uh, Maxine's just said, I'm a probation officer and I'm speaking on behalf of the National Association of Probation Officers. And what I want to say is that NAPO support these um, demonstrations and support people fighting the bedroom tax because we probation officers also work with quite a lot of really vulnerable people. Some of our clients, for example, are, are, are so damaged they, can't, they, they don't know how to manage to pay the bills, they live chaotic lives, and then to be further taxed, get the bedroom tax and the cuts that are happening, services are being cut. This is going to not only impact on them as individuals, but in terms of raising risk and risk of reoffending in the community, then the risk is going to increase. If someone can't manage to buy food, and that they know no different about shoplifting, they may go out and, and crime may increase. The government are talking about a, a rehabilitation revolution, and they're saying that, you know, they want to reduce levels of crime. And basically, what it's about, it's, it, it, it's about the wider issue of privatisation and attacking the poor and ordinary working people. And what they're doing is that they are attacking all public services, cutting um, funds for people and things like the bedroom tax. What I want to say is it's not about saving money, it's ideological. It's about stripping back the state, it's about bringing in private companies and the money is going to, to privatisation. As a NAPO member, probation, I want to tell you that the probation service is about to be cut by 70%, probably more. And, they, and what it's about is bringing in companies like G4S and Circo who are going to supervise offenders in the public. And, and also what that means is that our money, your money, taxpayers' money, is going to be siphoned off by these companies. And instead of it being ploughed into the probation service, they want to sack people, they want to pay people lower wages, so that they can make a profit out of your taxpayers' money. Can we trust these people? Can we trust these people to uh, keep us safe in the community? I don't think so. When you look at the likes of G4S and the Olympics debacle, we can see that G4S aren't fit, they're not suitable, we can't trust them. Also, yesterday I learned that the government, they talk about saving money, the bedroom tax is about saving money, that's all we hear. The England never fully riot, we've had enough. <laughs> Basically, what the government constantly tells us is about saving money. We need to save money for the greater good. But what I learned yesterday, what, what NAPO learned yesterday was that G4S and Circo, who, who do run private prisons and are responsible for tagging, have accidentally been overpaid. They've been overpaid. The, we're not saving money. And, the, you know, they're keeping that quiet. The world's prison, I don't know if anybody knows, that was run by Group 4 Security, Security Corps, G4F. That, it's been run so badly that that has now been taken into state control. And they're not going to leave it run by us, by the state. It's going to, they want to put it out for bidding again. So basically, I want to say is that the probation service wants to be part of the wider issue they want to be link up with other unions, really, to fight all the attacks that are happening on a, on, a, on a wider level. NAPO is really active. We come to meetings, we support you in everything that you're doing. But what you need to bear in mind, when people come up to you in your union, when you're on your demos and they're saying, we won't win, look at what happened when we had the strikes, look at what happens here. Cameron cannot even foster support within his own government. A hundred odd backbenchers have voted against him. He's, it, the, the Tory party's a mess, the coalition's a mess, you know, they are weak, and they're, they're doing lots of U-turns, there's been 37 U-turns since they've been in power, and that shows us that they have not got their act together, they're putting in policies as a reaction at the last minute, and we can pull back, we can fight the bedroom tax, we can fight privatisation, and we need to link together to be able to do it, we need to support each other, thanks.
Right, the next speaker we've got is Sam Moorcroft, who's been involved in organising around Gleadless Valley and the Manor. Hiya, my name's Sam Moorcroft from Gleadless Valley and the Socialist Party. First off, I think we've had some great speeches. So for all the speakers that have come up before me, can we have another round of applause? <laughs> now sometimes at the moment I feel like I've missed something here, because correct me if I'm wrong, but I think everybody else in this country understands that we're in a recession, a financial crisis that's been caused by greedy bankers, by tax dodging companies like Starbucks and Amazon, and yet we've got a cabinet of millionaires who seem to think that this crisis has been caused by council tenants with a spare bedroom. We've got a cabinet of millionaires that are giving tax breaks to their rich friends and at the same time attacking the poorest and the most vulnerable in society. We've got to fight against this government. We've got to use demonstrations, strike action, community campaigns, every tactic available to us to take on the Condemned Coalition and smash them to pieces. We've got to make this their poll tax. But we're fighting somebody else as well. In hell, the Labour Council has said that they'll evict nobody over the bedroom tax. In Nottingham, they're reclassifying houses as one bedroom, so nobody has to pay. But in the town hall down there, the silence is deafening. They're saying nothing, but we're hearing rumours that they're block booking courtrooms. We've got to say to this Labour Council, you should say no eviction. You should reclassify all the council housing in Sheffield as one bedroom. It's been in the papers today that over the last couple of months, emergency funding applications for people in severe financial hardship has increased 338%. Many people who would previously have been able to get access to hardship funds now have no money available to them because of the huge increase that's been going on. Now we've got to say very clearly that we're going to stand with everybody affected and if there are any threats of evictions, that we'll stand outside people's houses and we won't let bailiffs in. It's also come out today that in some areas, 50% of people are not paying the bedroom tax. They're not paying it in protest and they're not paying it because they can't afford it. Now we've got to stand with them and we should say something else as well. In those areas where people can't pay the bedroom tax, let's take that 50% and let's make it 100%. Yeah. Don't pay the bedroom tax and let's make this this government's poll tax. Yeah. How do we do that? We've got to give confidence. We've got to pledge to each and every person affected that if they don't pay the bedroom tax, we'll support them and we'll stop any attempt at eviction. And we've got to go further as well. If this council won't stop the bedroom tax, which it's in their power to do, then next year we'll stand anti-cuts, anti-bedroom tax candidates against them, and we'll fight in the council chamber as well. Thanks very much for listening. No to bedroom tax, no way. Tax the rich and make them pay. Right, just... Two more final speakers.